In this video, we're going to learn how to quickly set up your project using Unity Analytics. This lets you improve your game by analyzing how your players are actually playing your game. Let's begin! Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and this channel is all about helping you learn how to make your own games with in-depth tutorials made by a professional indie game developer. So if you find the video helpful, consider subscribing. Okay, so this is going to be a short video since it's extremely easy to add. Now over here I have my demo scene, it's just a basic platformer, so I have my character and I can move around and jump. I covered basic jumping in another video if you want to know how it works. And over here there are some hazards like this fire pit, and over here there's a spike. So if I touch them, yep, there you go, I die, and I can click a button to restart the level. Then if I keep going at the end of the level, yep, there you go, there's a nice start, and if I touch it, yep, there you go, I won the level. So then click on continue, and now I'm on a different level, and so on, and all the mechanics are all the same. This video is made possible thanks to these awesome supporters. Go to patreon.com slash unitycodemonkey to get some perks and help keep the videos free for everyone. All right, so that's my demo setup, just a pretty basic platformer. Okay, so let's set up our analytics. Now, like I said, it's extremely easy. We just go all the way up here to window, go into general and open up the services tab right here. So here, first of all, we need to create the Unity project ID. So just select an organization and head on create. And right away, the project has been created so we can see all of the Unity services that we can use. So there's lots of different services that can help you develop your game. In this one, we're focused on the analytics. So in here, just click on it. And yep, analytics, so you can figure out where your players get frustrated and how to improve them and so on. So just click on enable. And then it just asks you if your target is children. Chances are it is not, so just leave it unticked and click on continue. Okay, so in order to get some basic functionality, this is literally all there is to it. Just press the button, enable analytics, and yep, there you go, everything is working. So if I start playing right now, as soon as I hit play, then some basic analytics are sent. So now again, on the services window, we can open up analytics and click the button to go to the dashboard. So this opens up your browser and goes directly to the Unity dashboard. And over here is where you will see all of the various stats. Now, one thing about the data is that it takes up to one day to show up on the dashboard. So right now it shows up as empty, even though we already ran the game once. So in one day, this won't be updated with all of the stats. In case you have multiple projects, you can go up here in order to select the actual project that you set. In this case, it's this one. Okay, so this is the analytics overview. And here we can go into the data explorer. And here we can view the default stats. So right away in here, we can click in order to visualize the daily active users, monthly active users. Then there's also sessions per user. And in case you enable monetization, you also see a whole bunch of monetization revenue stats. So this is the type of data, and then down here is the segment. So this allows you to further drill down and actually identify the type of data that you're looking for. So by default, just by pressing a button, we already have quite a lot of data to improve our game. So we could see our retention and compare it with either all users or just a couple of countries. We could check out the number of daily active users per Android or per iOS and so on. So lots of data already here. However, we want to expand upon it. So let's learn how we can handle custom events. Okay, so here we are back in our game. Now the first thing we need is to actually think about what we want to keep track. So what sort of data would be useful for improving our game? Now in this simple example, the obvious answers are tracking deaths and wins. So let's start with the simple one of tracking wins. Now there are two ways we can send events. We can do it through code or through a component. So personally, I prefer sending them through code, but I'll also cover the component in a bit. Now over here I have my basic player script, and then down here we are testing for the level win and level lose. So essentially the star game object contains a star component, so just testing for the collision, and if it collides then there you go, level win. So just some pretty basic stuff. And it's in here that we want to fire our custom event. So for that, let's go all the way up here, and we're going to add using unity engine.analytics. Then we can go down here, and we're going to add analytics and call custom event. And all we need is to pass a name for our custom event. So in this case, let's say level win. Then let's add our current level. So I have just a basic static class in here and holds an enum for the level. So I can just use this function down here to get the current level. And that's what we use. 
All right, so this will be triggered whenever I win a level and then tell me which level we want. Now this function here returns a analytic result. So this is just a basic enum with a bunch of possible values. So in most cases, what you should be getting is just a simple okay. So we can add a log to test. So in here, let's capture that. So we grab the result and then we simply print it. Okay, so let's try. And I want to win, so let's jump in, jump in, and go through this one. And yep, now win the level. All right, great. And over here in the console, yep, we can see indeed analytics result okay. So this is telling us that our custom event is being correctly sent. All right, awesome. Now with this function call, all we did was just send a basic event. So essentially just a string. However, we have another function where we can send in a dictionary. So here, this one takes a custom event name and this one takes a custom event name as well as our dictionary. So alternatively, instead of sending a string composed of the level win and the number, we can send the name of the event as level win and then we pass in a dictionary. So let's create a new dictionary of type string object. Okay, so we're calling custom event, passing in the string level win, then we're passing in a dictionary, and a dictionary takes a string key and then an object. So for the string key, let's call it our level, and the actual value will be the same level. All right, so just like this, it should be working. Let's test. Okay, here we are, and let's try to win. And if there you go, we have our OK. So once again, our analytics is being correctly sent. And in this case, it's being sent along with a dictionary. OK, so that's just one way to send events through code. Now let me just quickly cover sending events through a component. Now for that, let's create an empty game object. And then down here, we can add the component. And we go into analytics and we add the analytics event tracker. So here you can see a whole bunch of events for when the event will be triggered. So based on its lifecycle, based on a UI or a timer. So for example, we could choose lifecycle and then say on start. Then we would say send an event. Then let's say level win. And then we could add some parameters. So let's say the level. In this case, let's say the level one. So essentially this would send the exact same event that we sent through code, except it would be sent through here and it would be sent when this game object is created. So for example, we would make this a prefab and instantiate it when the player touches the start. So that's how you would send events through a basic component without touching the code. Now, like I said, I personally prefer to do it all through code, but here's the other option and it's up to you. All right, so now for the other thing we want to track, it's deaths. So here we have the platform script. And again, this is when he hits a star and wins. And this is when he hits either a lava or a spike where he dies. So here, let's fire off pretty much a similar event. So we can just copy this. So in this case, it's not a level win, but a level died. And then again, we can pass in the same dictionary with level and show the current level. So with this, we would gather some stats on how many times a player died on a specific level. And again, over here, we have a dictionary. So this is not limited to just one extra value. I believe the total maximum is 10. So we can add various parameters in here. So for example, we add a level in which the player died. And then we can also add another one. And here, let's say we want to keep track of the position. And now over here, we can ask ourselves an interesting question, which is what would be the best type of data that we could send in order to make it easy to analyze and further improve our game. So in here, we could send a vector three. However, doing so would require making some extra tools in order to actually analyze that data, since every vector three would be very different. So instead, what we can do is just some basic math and split up our level into various sections. Since the game is a platformer, the player is pretty much always moving just left to right. So we could essentially, so in this case, it's very easy to split our level into pretty much some vertical slices. So here we take this transform position, which is the player position. Then let's say we divide by 20 units and we round this value. So essentially for every 10 units on the horizontal axis, we're going to have a different section. So here we can create a new game object just to visually see. All right, over there we have our position. So if the player were to die in here on position 10, then it would die on section zero. Then if it died over here on, let's say, position 65, then it would be tagged as a death on the section three and so on. So this is just an example as to how you should think about what type of data you're actually storing in order to make the best decisions using that data. Okay, so that's pretty much it. 
we have a custom event, we give it a name, we pass in the level where this event was fired, and also the position where the event was fired. So with this, we know on which level the player died, and roughly where on that level he died. Okay, so let's test and see if our result is okay. Okay, so here we are, let's move forward, and yep, I fall and I died, and yep, there you go. And if I look in the console, there's the okay result. All right, so everything seems to be working. And now with all of the data correctly set up, now this would be the time to send your game to some testers in order to get some data. And after you've correctly set up your analytics, you need to wait a couple of hours to about a day for those stats to show up in the dashboard. All right, so here I am one day later and we can view the stats. So on the data explorer, you can see that it did indeed update. So a DAU is a daily active user. It was just me playing the game, so yep, just one. And now that we have some data, we can go on the event manager. And over here, we see all of our custom events. So the first one we sent was the string level win underscore one. And then we started sending just level win, level died. And each of these, as you can see, has various parameters. So we've got the level with each level and then the position, which we slice the level into various positions. So we can see that the custom events are correctly being sent. And over here on the data explorer, we can click on this to open up some custom events. And now let's say a level died for all current users and let's put it by a level. And just like this in there, we can see all the stats. So we can see, for example, that there were only one deaths on level three, there were three deaths on level two and 11 deaths on level one. So for example, let's assume we want our game to be somewhat casual and not meant to be a hardcore platformer. So this tells us that there were way too many deaths on level one. So using this data, we would now know, okay, we should probably rebalance this level to make it slightly easier. So you can add as many custom events as you want and search for them using any of the parameters that you sent. Now on the rest of the dashboard, you also have the funnel analyzer. So here, this helps you identify where the players drop off. So you can see a bunch of preset funnel templates. So for example, track whenever the user does something new, track when monetization happens, when people watch ads or so on or you can just create a new funnel. And here you can give the funnel a name. So let's say a level progression. And then you can add the various events that make up this funnel. So for example, we would track level win. Then over here, the parameter on one and equals. And in this case, we used an enum to define our levels and it's underscore one. So on the first part of the funnel, we would go through a win on level one. Then we'd go win on level two. So just like this, we have a funnel that will show us where the players drop off our game. Here is the funnel already set up. And now in our case, since I did go through all three levels, we can see 100%. But for example, let's say that only half of the players actually went through level one. So level one would be at 100 and everything else would be at less than that. So using this, we can very easily see where our players are dropping off. Now there's always a natural drop off, but we can analyze it to see if the drop off that we get is the expected one or if players are dropping off way too much. You can create any type of funnels based on the events you are capturing. So the limit for the system is really just your imagination. Then here we also have the segments part. And here you can separate your audience into groups to better analyze your stats. So by default, you have all the segments. So for example, you have all the current users. So this is everyone who used the app in the last 90 days. Then we see a bunch of them based on life cycle. So what happens to the users on the first three days and so on. Then we have a bunch of geography things, a bunch of monetization, and also our platforms. And once again, you can also create new segments and you can add custom events and here go as detailed as you want. Then down here, we also have market insights. So here we can see a bunch of data on the current state of the market. You have stats for mobile and also for standalone. So for example, here on standalone, we can see that the majority of people has multiple cores. Then down here, we can see that most of them are on Windows. And we can also see that quite a lot of people are using 1080p. However, there's still a significant portion of people using smaller resolutions. So this tells you do not ignore those people and make sure your game and all of its text is either adaptable or can be read at smaller resolutions. And for mobile, we also see tons of data. So you can see all the various aspect ratios. Here we see the platform split with Android taking a huge chunk and the various vendors that make up all of those users. So here you can see tons of data on the current state of the market, which will help you make decisions to make your game the best it can be. And lastly, we have the raw data export. So this is where you get the raw analytics data, which you can then use to make your own custom analysis and visualizations. You can export as JSON or as TSV. 
And that makes up Unity Analytics. As you saw, only took was a single button press to enable the basic analytics, and then we expand upon that with custom events to track specific things in our game. Then using that custom data, we were able to improve the game by identifying a specific point where the difficulty curve was too steep. So the end result of all this is a better game for everyone. If you found this video helpful, consider liking and subscribing. This video is made possible thanks to these awesome supporters. Go to patreon.com slash unitycodemonkey to get some perks and help keep the videos free for everyone. As always, you can download the project files and utilities from unitycodemonkey.com. Subscribe to the channel for more Unity tutorials, post any questions you have in the comments, and I'll see you next time.